Okay, welcome uh, today. Uh, we're, we're here with a Q&A with our brand new head women's basketball coach, Hernando Planels. Coach Planels comes to us uh, uh, from uh, Duke University, uh, served as the associate head coach through 2019, assistant coach and associate head coach at Duke University. Uh, brings a long list of uh, basketball credentials, including overseas and professional uh, coaching opportunities, including the uh, NBA G League. Uh, we're excited about him. Uh, coach, you know, you, you've uh, uh, been through the process. Uh, you've been through the committee. You, we've had a chance to talk. I've gotten a chance to know you. Um, but for all of the fans that are getting to know you for just the very first time and the opportunity to uh, get to know you, what would you love to share? Well, first of all, by the way, that, that committee, the search was, I, you talk about being thorough, it was absolutely thorough. I loved every part of it with everything else. But Coach, I appreciate you having me. This is, this is just an amazing opportunity to, to be at, at William Jessup and, you know, be, you know, run the women's basketball program. And I think, like you mentioned, I, I spent years at Duke. I spent really almost like a coaching vagabond, but not really, because you learn from so many different places that you've gone through, so many mentors, uh, throw many, so many different cultures, et cetera. So, you know, just to, just to be here and, and to be at a school like William Jessup, you know, I'm a man of faith, the man of family. Uh, a man of our program, man of our, of our university. And, and that's sort of like the first tenets of, of myself as a coach and what our program is, is going to look like. That's fantastic. So like you already touched on my next question, which was, you know, what excited you about the opportunity at Jessa? Because for us, it, it's amazing just, you know, to, to be able to command such a great pool of candidates because we did have an amazing pool of candidates. You rose to the top and we're so proud to have you join us. But uh, for us to, to be in a position where the candidate pool is so deep and so strong that the associate head coach at Duke University is interested in our position, um, you know, what brought you to putting your name in the hat and going through the process uh, and ultimately accepting the position? Well, you know, when you're at, you know, at a very special place, Duke University, for seven years, you learn so much. But there's also a, a daily workload, a daily grind, which, which really never stops. And I enjoyed my time. I loved being at Duke, the recruiting, the, the, the games, everything else. But at the same time, my, my kids were getting older. I have a 19 year old son and a 17 year old daughter and I wanna spend more time with them. And I wanted to go ahead and, and see what would happen if I went ahead and, and just left Duke and, and go from there and really find what really is, is my calling. And I think like we talked about in the interview process, it wasn't, I wasn't applying to so many different positions. I, I, saw this one and I said, wow, you know, William Jessup, I, I know the conference uh, very well. Um, I wanted to learn more about the school. I wanted to be in that small university athletic environment. Um, I, I just wanted to be part of it. And the more I learned about William Jessup, the, the more I got to know you and the athletic staff, you become even more fired up, right? You get so excited for those opportunities to, I think like you and I talk about, you know, plant your feet, you know, get some, you know, sow some seeds, and really grow something that is special that you know you have started that the, that the school has started and just to be part of that to be part of that journey really really excited me and then of course you know when you called me and 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 offered the opportunity I was you know as you know I didn't say a whole lot because I was stunned I was stunned and excited and 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 I and I knew I was called to be there and myself and my family are just so happy to be part of the William Jessup community. That's fantastic. You know, one of the things that's, uh, you know, that, that pops off, you know, uh, the, the screen, you know, we've been doing this whole deal through Zoom. We've yet to shake hands. And, and yeah. if, if we do so, we'll probably have to have some protective, personal protective <laughs> uh, uh, equipment on in order to, to legally do it right now. But uh, is, is uh, your enthusiasm, you know, you spent some time, you know, uh, developing uh, your motivational speaking. Um, how has that influenced, you know, your, your ability to coach and uh, the direction that you take uh, a program such as, you know, what you're going to be doing here at Jessup? Well, I've, I've always believed that we're more than just coaches, right? There's, there's just, you know, coaching has always been, you're just kind of just putting players on the court and then you let them play. And, and you know, we get kind of uh, appraised and, and criticized for the decisions we make. But as coaches, we are motivational speakers. We inspire. We, we are teachers. We are all of these different things. We spend so much time with our athletes and student athletes that we really have a huge responsibility that we have been gifted to share with our student athletes. So as I had, you know, as a high school coach, a junior college coach, coach in several different countries and professional level. And, and, and then at Duke, you learn so many different lessons and you realize 
that the mind is the most powerful thing. You know, we want our players to get in the court. We want them to get shots up, work on ball handling, all of those things. But we also have to work on their mind. And I realize that as we grow up, we carry the weight of how we were brought up. So what can we do to motivate our players, our student athletes, to be not only tremendous players, but tremendous people. So over time, I've been very blessed to kind of shape some things uh, together, um, put different programs together for different sports teams and organizations on how to perform at a high level using gratitude, um, using the power of smiling, as you know, I've spoken to you many times about, um, and then to to move that needle more so that we could have top level production in in a very, very competitive environment. That's fantastic. Uh, you know, what, what's your, you know, you, you've mentioned, you know, your, your, your experiences overseas, G League and, and, and Duke University. Is there a singular, and I know there's probably many, it's competing, and you're going to have to come up with one. I'm going to put you on the spot. <laughs> but, hey, give me one experience that, you know, really impacted you, something that maybe was like an accomplishment or even just something that was uh, nondescript, but it just really had an impact on you as a coach and uh, the journey that, you, you know, that, that, that you've experienced as a collegiate basketball coach. I think it was more off the court, more, more than anything else. My, my former boss, Joanne P. McCauley, who just resigned uh, from Duke University, um, she, she called me with the opportunity to be an assistant coach. Now, when I went to Duke, I had never coached women's basketball before. And actually, my first position at Duke, I was just in an admin role on the women's basketball program. I never thought ever that you'd ever be able to coach in Cameron Hoover Stadium. But, you know, it was, it was that faith, that hope, that trust – that somebody showed me, right? And, and, and that's what coaching is. To me, she's my ultimate head coach because she, she shared that hope and trust with me. And, and, and that changed my life. You know, I, I look at my life as the 20s, the 30s, and now the 40s. Now I'm giving away my age. You know, and you go through, through different parts of it. But that would be the biggest. When Joanne P. McCauley called me, and I remember I was at a drive through and I think at Taco Bell, I know that's not the greatest health thing I should be eating at that time. You might, hey, we might have to edit that out because <laughs> the, the team might think that's okay for their health is that they're going to go to Taco Bell for a pregame meal. And, and you know what? <laughs> the thing that we say at Jessup is that, you know, we're going to, we're going to, uh, uh, we're going to eat well, we're going to sleep well, and we're going to travel well. And coach Taco Bell is just not going to cut it for the performance standards we have here at Jessup. Take out Taco Bell. I was not at the drive through at Taco Bell. She called me and I was really um, excited to, to, to jump on board and, and be an assistant coach. And that, that changed, changed my life with everything. And there are so many different, you know, stories and everything else that I'll share with you and everybody else who asks when I see them later on. That's, that's fantastic. You know, we'll, we'll have plenty of time to do that on the long road trips, you know, yeah. that, that, we'll, that we'll get, you know, at the airports and then on the bus and so forth. I'm looking forward to that. Um, you know, uh, you know, one, one of the other thing that uh, I think is important for everybody to be able to encapsulate, like when you take over a program, you know, there's different types of programs, there's programs that are already 100% established, and they're an elite, you know, they're one of the top five or 10 programs in the country. There's those that that um, um, have been have been good, but they've been good for a long time. And then there's those that are emerging, you know, that, that they, they've had a couple of good years where they've got something that's going right, but it needs to be uh, uh, continue to grow and then become consistent and then to raise up to that championship level. And then you have those that are floundering. Um, you know, as a coach, you know, I've been involved with joining um, uh, all different types of kinds of programs, you know, in each one of those categories is just explained. I would, I would classify our Jessup women's basketball program as one of the emerging programs in the country. Um, coach Westendorf, who's departed from Ferris State, um, uh, got us on the right path, and we've had two 20-win seasons in a row. We've had, uh, you know, three years in a row where we've, we've experienced the opportunity to, uh, uh, um, you know, make uh, the, the, the postseason and, and, and compete at the, uh, the GSAC championship. We've had one national tournament, you know, uh, a, a bid where we got a chance to go down and, and, and play at the national tournament as one of the final 32 teams in the country. Uh, we've achieved a, a top 25 ranking once. Uh, in the 2018-19 season, we were in the others receiving votes consistently this past year. Um, but we're looking, we're not happy with that. We're happy that we're moving in the right direction. Uh, tell me what your first order of business is with the team, and then how do we capitalize off of, you know, that momentum that we have uh, with the program? Well, a lot of it comes into the word service, which we talked about during the interview process, right? Like servant leadership. 
So my very first order, and I've spoken to all of our players, is what can I do to serve you? And what do you think we need to do to continue this program to go at, to another level? You know, I, I really believe that, that Coach Kurt left a, a tremendous uh, uh, talent right here at, at Jessup. And I, I'm not a big believer in coming in and, and putting my, my own stamp. It's about how can we collaborate? How can we embrace everything together? Take the best parts, enhance it, and then move it, move it forward. So a lot of it has been communicating with the players and the coaching staff on, on what happened, what didn't happen, what needs to happen, what do we have to do recruiting, what do we have to do in, in everything from, from how we eat to how we prepare to how we practice. So it's really like a lot of note-taking and listening. And that's the first part. Once you listen, then you're able to, to, to move forward. We're going to have a first Zoom call later on this week. And you're going to see all their great faces on, on the screen and everything else and really put sort of our, our mission, our expectations as we move forward. Because, you know, August is right around the corner. Where we're going to see all their great faces and, and ready to start the ball rolling. That's exciting. I can't wait. Uh, and, and Coach, um, you know, you mentioned staff, right? And, and uh, you know, we, 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 we've got a, a very good assistant coaching staff that was supporting um, Coach Kurt and – uh, have you have you had a chance to speak with them? And if so, how have those conversations gone? And what are your plans for our staff as we move forward? Well, I'm, first of all, they are phenomenal humans. I really enjoyed speaking with both of them. Um, and I'm just going to say in front, I'm gonna, I, I have invited them to stay on our journey with us. I think what they've done um, ever since Coach Kurt uh, moved on to, to even to now when I came on, just how you know, I was onboarded through them. And they shared with me how they kept recruiting, how they kept talking with with, with the women on our team, I mean, those things are invaluable. You know, when you have coaches who look beyond themselves, who are, who are more worried about the program than they are about themselves, that just really is, is part of our servant leadership. And just, you know, I, I speak with Megan like every day. I speak to both of them every day. They're probably like, oh, my gosh, H, stop calling and texting. But, <laughs> you know, I'm sending them video. They're sending me video. We're like, what do we do with this? Have you talked to this person? Has this person signed? I mean, they're, they're excited about it with, with everything. And I was able to listen to them, what, what, what they would like to see in terms of how we can move it forward. And those are all things that we want. We are a collaborative unit. Obviously, as the head coach, you got to make the final say and the final decision on where we're going to move forward. But having those voices who's been there already is a huge, huge advantage that, that I'm definitely taking, it, taking advantage of. Uh, I, absolutely. I think that's fantastic. Coach Tech, Coach Megan, both fantastic human beings. They've, they've invested so much with Jessup Athletics. They've helped us build our brand of women's basketball, um, you know, right here. Coach Megan, obviously, professional player, former Division One player, heart for Christ, heart for God, heart for the team. Coach Tet, who is a strong Christian man who's given and devoted so much of his life to uh, Sacramento area women's basketball and girls basketball, um, just embedded in the community loves Jesus, loves basketball, loves developing the game, the women's game specifically, mm -hmm. extremely talented people. I'm so glad to hear that, that you have plans for them to stay with us um, mm -hmm. and for them to continue building uh, our program, you know, with you, which is, right. it's fantastic. Uh, when, when you, when you look at style of play, I think that everybody's sitting on the edge of the seat right now and they're wondering, okay, H, uh, you know, you're talking all this stuff, but, you know, what are we going to see when the team, you know, runs out of that tunnel and, uh, you know, we tip off for your very first game? What's the style? Are we going to be the, the black and blue old Big East? Or are we going to be, you know, Loyola and Marymount uh, run and gun? Or are we going to be something in between? Uh, you know, is there a preferred style, you know, that you would love to see? Well, I mean, everything just starts from dictating tempo. And, of course, you know, it talks about offense, our offensive flow, how we push the ball. Then we go into our, our transition defense, into our half-court defense. But we also want to own um, the in-between, the out-of-bounds plays, but also the rebounding battle. Now, that doesn't mean that we're going to get every rebound. It means that we are going to have a chance for every, what we call, as you know, 50-50 ball to, to play a part of it. And then that really sets up our defense. We, we want to play fast. And if you're open, you got to shoot the ball. I already told all the players, if you don't shoot the ball and you're open, you're going to come out. That's what I'm going to take you out for because we're going to find someone who's, gonna, who's going to shoot with it. Now, that doesn't mean we're going to take 55 three-pointers, although that may happen once or twice. But what will happen is that you're going to get an exciting brand of basketball where 
you know, the way the team is, is built, you know, obviously having an All-American center, Miranda coming back is, is amazing. We have very good guard play. We have tremendous guards coming in. So we have already the great base of playing up and down, but that means we also have to play that way in practice. We have to lift that way. We have to run that way. So everything we're going, we're going about 150 miles per hour, which, by the way, it fits my personality. So we're going to play that way, and we're going to see how we do. There you go. Now, you know, you're, you're kind of known in, in, the, in, the, in the, the women's basketball coaching circles as a pretty snappy dresser. And uh, the question becomes, what, what's, what's the deal on the sideline? Or, you know, I mean, what are we going to be looking at here when, when we see you, you know, coaching a team on the sideline? Are you a polo guy? Or are you a suit and tie guy? What, what are we going to see on the sideline? It's, it's going to be a suit and tie. I, I don't know if I could do polos. I, I, I watch Oregon do that. And I know Coach Kelly Graves over the time. They're, they're all in great polos and everything. And I, like, oh, I just can't do it yet. Maybe later, but right now, no. So we're going to wear suits or maybe some shirt tie combinations. You know, it's great, too, because when you're talking to the referee, when you take off your jacket while talking to the referee, it's like shows a little emotion. Maybe they'll, you get a couple calls that way. <laughs> Fantastic. I, I, I'm sure we'll get a chance to hear a few of those conversations with the <laughs> officials, uh, you know, during the upcoming seasons that we have. Uh, you know, hey, uh, when, you know, you're, 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 you're a California guy, you're an L.A. native, right? You know, we're NorCal, that's SoCal. You, you know, you're kind of changing teams there. Have you, have you caught any flack from your family regarding becoming a NorCal guy, you know, uh, and, and, and leaving SoCal behind? Because it's an important question. You know, the inquiring minds want to know. No, you know what? I, it, it's funny because I've told a, a couple of friends that I'll be heading up to Northern Cal, that I'm coming back to California. And then I said, but I'm going to be up in Rockland near Sacramento. And they're like, that's not, that's not California. It's a totally different area. I was like, are you kidding me? I don't want to hear all this stuff. So, so I, I get it. You know, I guess I'll experience it firsthand, but I'm, you know, I'm excited about it. I, I grew up in Southern California and, and I like to, to experience different things. It's going to be great opportunity and adventure to be up in, in rock in the Sacramento, Sacramento area and enjoy life that way. That's fantastic. You know, I'm a transplant as well. And, and I'm an East Coast guy from Florida originally. And, uh, you know, I've been living on the West Coast for 14 years with the last seven being right here in Rockland, California has become a home for my, my, my wife and I. William Jessup University is, has been a, a staple to who we are. And it's become a bigger brand in the community. Um, and uh, athletics has been one of the vehicles that we've been able to connect with the community through reading pro programs, Shriners Hospital uh, camps, sports camps and initiatives, um, you know, and, and, you know, serving at the local food banks and, and, and doing anything that we can to just kind of impact. You got any plans for being able to connect with the community with the women's basketball program so that we continue to kind of grow uh, that fan base organically? Absolutely. I mean, we, we have to be out in the community, our players, our coaching staff, myself, ev everyone, you know, it's, it's, it's a bit, you know, having a basketball program is very much having a brand, right? William, the William Jessup brand is, is huge and it's getting bigger. Well, it's the same thing with our sports team, the same thing with our logo every, so we have to be able to be out in the community all the time, wearing the gear, being excited, you know, shaking hands, kissing babies. I would, I always would say, all the time but you know and that, and that that's important people when they have a connection to you they're more inclined to want to support what you're doing so the more we do that the more fans we get the more fans we get the more community get and then not only does it just help our players it helps our coaching staff it helps our university and it, and it helps the the communities so yes jumping in two feet in the community that's awesome i love to hear that uh you know, Coach, a parting shot. What's what's what what, what do you want to throw our way? Some to the the Warrior Nation, the Warrior Faithful. You know, uh, we we uh, we we we've, we've uh, really worked hard to, to you know create a real strong culture of of one warrior and rising together and 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 warrior strong, overcoming adversity. Um, and uh, you know, we we have a little uh, uh, hashtag that we embody those different principles through called uh, hashtag We Are Warriors. Uh, so, you know, you're talking to the Warrior Nation right now, and, you know, what's your, what's your parting shot? Well, I, first of all, I'm just honored to be part of, of the community, part of the William Jessup University. I, I'm so excited and ecstatic, right? But the other part, too, is that we want to be just great servants to the community. You know, we want to show that not only are we a winning program on the court, 
but off the court as well too. We, we are building our program to championship levels, but we're also helping our young women grow into society and be tremendous uh, leaders as, as they eventually leave and graduate from, from the school. So I'm hoping that our program will continue the success we've had um, and moving in direction where, where, you know what, everyone's proud of the women's basketball program. Everyone's proud of the work that our young women and coaching staff are doing at the school and in the community. So I hope you just come out, support us, support Jessup Athletics, and I hope to meet all of you. That's fantastic. Coach, thank you for joining me today. This is uh, Athletic Director and Head Men's Basketball Coach Lance Von Vogt. I'm sitting with our brand new, just announced, uh, Head Women's Basketball Coach at Jessup University, which is Hernando Planels. Uh, Hernando, um, we don't get you until August uh, when, when you actually land here in person. Um, probably about 10 days or so before the start of school. Uh, I can guarantee you that over the next, you know, uh, 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 30 to 40 days until we, we actually have you here physically, the excitement's going to be building. Um, and we look forward to welcoming you with open arms. Well, I appreciate it. Thanks again for having me and uh, hopefully see all of you soon. All right. Take care. Thanks, Coach. Right. You got it.